Hello and welcome to a, another episode of Trucker Overhaul CDL CDL training video. Um, this video is going to be on basic control of the vehicle. So I need everybody to pay close attention to this uh, this video right here because it's going to be very informative and it's going to give you some insight on the basic, you know, controlling of the, um, the truck. So with that being said, let's move to the first slide. Now, basic control of your vehicle. Now, to drive a vehicle safely, you must be able to control its speed and direction. Safe operation of a commercial vehicle requires skills in accelerating, steering, stopping, backing safely. So fasten your seatbelt when you're on the road. Apply the parking brakes when you leave the vehicle. Make sure you do that because you don't want the, the truck rolling back on you. So it's going to be a little long, so I'm going to move, you know, as quickly as possible and try to keep you guys, you know, up to what's going on. Acceleration. Do not roll back when you start. You don't want to do that. If you do that, you might have a vehicle behind you, might have a person behind you, might have an object behind you. You do not want to roll that vehicle back. Uh, if you have a manual transmission vehicle, partly engage the clutch before you turn your, before you take your right foot off the brake. So you want to ease off the clutch until you feel that grab. And then you could continue, you could take your feet off the brake and then you could continue easing off the clutch. Put on a parking brake whenever necessary to keep your vehicle from rolling back. Release the parking brake only when you have applied enough engine power to keep from rolling back. Like I said, you wanna ease off the clutch until you feel that, that tug and then you take your feet off the, the brake and then you continue easing off the clutch. So that clutch, it, it acts as a brake. On track the trailer equipped with the trailer brake handle valve. That's the valve that you you pull on. Um, it mainly be like close to the emergency brake and trailer brake knobs. Um, sometimes it be, you know, attached to the steering wheel. The hand valve can apply to keep from rolling back. You can apply that to keep from rolling back. Speed up smoothly and gradually so the vehicle does not jerk. You don't want to. You don't want to be jerking. You know, stuff might fall from overhead compartments. You, you want to keep from um, jerking the vehicle. Rough acceleration can cause mechanic hook damage. When pulling a trailer, rough acceleration can damage the coupling. Speed up very gradually when tractor when traction is poor, as in rain, rain or snow. If you use too much power, the drive wheel may spin. You could lose control. If your drive wheel spins, begins to spin, take your foot off the acceleration. I know people got a habit of, you know, hitting the acceleration, trying to straighten the vehicle out. Take your feet off of the, off the gas pedal. That way it continues to slow down by, its own, by itself. Hold the steering wheel firmly with both hands. Your hands should be on opposite sides of the the wheel, if you hit a curve or a pothole, the wheel could pull away from, from your hand unless you have a firm hold on it. So I know a lot of people have a, a tendency to drive with one hand, but if you hit a pothole that, that um, stern tire blow out, and it's gonna be, it's gonna snatch you. It's gonna make you use some muscle. Push the brake pedal down gradually. 
You don't want to stomp on a break. You want to gradually, you want to stay calm. So staying calm, you, you could gradually press, apply the brake pedal. The amount of brake pressure you need to stop the vehicle will depend on the speed of the vehicle and how quickly you need to stop. Control the pressure so the vehicle comes to a smooth, safe stop. If you have a manual transmission, push the clutch in when the engine is close to idling. So that's some pointers for you. Backing safely. Because you cannot see everything behind your vehicle, backing is always dangerous. Avoid backing when you can. When you park, try to park so you will be able to pull forward when you leave. When you have to back, here's a few simple safety rules. Start in the proper position. Look at your path. Use miracle mirrors on both sides. So don't get don't get a dead stare on on one side of the um on your driver's side mirror or your passenger side you want to make sure you don't you don't hit nothing so you want to use both sides of the mirrors you want to look at your path look at where the trailer going and always the first thing is start in a proper position if you don't start in a proper position it's going it's going to cause you to do a lot of pull-ups Back slowly. Back and turn towards the driver's side whenever possible. Use a helper whenever possible. So when you get to a pickup or a delivery, if you um if it's a tight spot that you gotta back into, ask the guys on the dock, you know, to come, you know, watch, make sure you don't hit nothing. They have no problem doing that because they don't want to get blamed for you know, a damaged trailer from another from another company. Uh, let's see. So, like I said, starting in the proper position, pull the vehicle in the best possible—I mean, best best position to allow you to back safely. This position will depend on the type of backing to be done. So, you know, you got your side side, blind side, alley dock. You know, you got all these different backing maneuvers that you that you um, that you have to use out there while you're on the road. So especially like in New Jersey, New York, you got to know, you know, because a lot of them, you know, you don't have a lot of space. Look at your path. Look at your line of travel before you begin. Like, so you want to make sure you you know exactly where you want your tandems to hit before you start turning. You want to you want to like you know get a picture in your head how you see it going. Get out and walk around your vehicle. Make sure you ain't got no bottles, nothing that could blow your tires. Um, see, check your clearance to the side and overhead, in and near the path of your vehicle will take. So you want to make sure you don't, don't back under no low clearances um, docks. You know, some of them be having them, um, what they call it, like them little, sh them little sheds hanging from they right over their docks. You want to make sure you can fit up under that. Use mirrors on both sides. Like I said, you want to check the outside mirrors on both sides frequently. Get out of the vehicle and check your path if you aren't if you aren't sure about something. You know, it doesn't hurt to get out the truck, walk to the back, make sure, you know, you're not about to hit anything, nobody's standing behind the truck. You know, you just want to make sure it's as safe as possible and you don't turn a short day into a long day. Back slowly. You know, when you're backing slowly, you can hear, you know, if you're about to hit something. 
you could hear it, you know, that like if it's a pole behind you, could, you could feel the pressure, the stopping power of that, that pole because it's not going to let you go no further. But if you back up fast, it's just going to run right over that pole. So, you know, that's why you want to make sure you back slowly. Always back as slowly as possible. Use the lowest reverse gear so you can more easily correct any stirring errors. You also can stop quickly if necessary. So like I said, make sure you be able to control the situation. You don't want to be put in a bad uh, spot where you just ran over a pole or you hit somebody that you didn't see that was going to you know, run out behind the trailer. You, you know, you, you get that a, a lot in a truck stop. Back and turn towards the driver's side. So you always want to do a, um, a driver's side back. That way you can see, you know, everything on, from the driver's side. Back to the driver's side so you can see better. Like I said, back and towards the right side is very dangerous because you cannot see as well. You had to pop the brakes, you know, uh, get out the truck, look out the passenger side window. So, you know, that, that blind side backing, you know, just avoid it as much as possible. If you back and turn towards the driver's side, you can watch the rear of your vehicle by looking out the side window. So you would drive a side back in. Even if it means going around the block to put your vehicle in, the, in this position. So sometimes you might have to pass the warehouse up, turn down the street back up, and then come back down. The added safety is worth it. You as a helper, like I said, some of these warehouses don't mind. They workers coming out, giving giving you a hand to back up. You as a helper when you can. There are blind spots you cannot see, so a helper is important. The helper should stand near the back of your vehicle where you can see the helper. Make sure he's not on the opposite side. If he if you lose sight of him, you stop. You wait until you can see him. Before you begin backing, work, work out a set of hand signals that you both understand. Agree on signals for stop. Shifting gears. Correct shifting of gears is important. You don't want to grind the gears because you'll you damage the flywheel. If you cannot get your vehicle into the right gear while driving, you will you will have less control. Man, dealing with manual transmission, basic method for shipping up. So that's going up in gears. Most heavy vehicles with manual transmission require double clutching to change gears. Below is the basic method. It's the basic. As you get more experience, then you know you start getting your own method of shifting gears. Release accelerator, pushing clutch, and shifting neutral at the same time. Release clutch, let engine and gear slow down to the RPM required for the next gear. This takes practice. That's why. That's why the trainers work with you. With, um, with shifting gears, pushing the clutch and shift to the highest gear at the same time. So remember that. You had to do it at the same time. Release clutch and press accelerator at the same time. So that's how double clutching works. You clutch and shift at the same time. Shifting gears using double clutch requires practice. If you remain too long in neutral, you may 
may have difficulty putting a vehicle into the next gear. If so, do not try to force it. I repeat, do not try to force it. Return to neutral. Release the clutch. Increase engine speed to match road speed and try again. So doing all that still remain calm. Don't panic. Knowing when to shift up. Now that's the that's the key. You gotta know when to shift. There are two ways of knowing when to shift. You could use the engine speed, which is the RPMs that's on your dash. So study the driver manual for your vehicle and learn the operation RPM range. Watch your tack meter and shift up when your engine reaches the top of the of the range. Some newer vehicles use progressive shifting. The RPMs at which you shift becomes higher as you move up in gears. Find out what what's right for your vehicle you're operating. So with trucks, we could shift anywhere. It depends on how fast you shift. So with new drivers, you could shift within between 1,000 and 1,200 RPMs. Once you get into higher gears, like let's say like fifth six on up then it's um between 13 and 1800 so it depends on how fast you shift so using the road speed learn what speeds each gear is good for then by using a speedometer you will know when to shift up. With each method, you may learn to use engine sounds to know when to shift. So as you get more experience, you'll be able to listen to the engine sound and know when to shift. So take your time with that. You ain't, you ain't got to be in a rush to do that. So basic procedures for shifting down. So this is the basic procedures for downshifting. Release accelerator, push in clutch, and shift to neutral at the same time. Release the clutch. Press the accelerator, increase engine and gear speed to the RPMs required in the lower gear. Push in clutch and shift to the lower, lower gear at the same time. Release clutch and push accelerator at the same time. Now, so like it's come with practice. So you're not gonna you're not gonna know it right off the bat. You gotta do it a couple of times and once you get it, once you get your body start getting in that motion, then you'll start, you know, feeling feeling around the gears and you'll know how to clutch and shift at the same time. So it's a you just gotta get coordinated with it. So practice makes perfect. Um, downshifting, like upshifting, requires knowing when to shift. Use either the tactometer or speedometer and downshift at the right RPMs or road speed. Special conditions when you should downshifts are. So now these are the special conditions. Before starting down a hill, so you know you're gonna be driving in mountains, so you need to know hey, what gear you need to be in to hold your truck back, especially if you got a heavy load. Slow down and shift down to a speed that you can control without using the brakes hard. So the engine brakes help you also with that. Otherwise, the brakes can overheat and lose their braking power, and that which you don't want to use. You don't want to lose your braking power. So I know this might sound a little um, scary, but once you get the once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to control it. You'll know when to downshift. You'll know when to upshift. You'll know what kind what um what mountains that you, you know, having difficulties with, you know, what curves the mountains have, you'll know all this. So 
that comes with, you know, experience of being, you know, in that in that position. Downshift before starting down the hill. So, like I said, you want to make sure you're downshift before you start down the hill. Make sure you are in a low enough gear, usually lower than a, the gear required to climb the same hill. So, if it took you, um, let's say, down the, the fifth gear to climb it, so going down it, you're gonna have to be in the fourth gear. Um, eight gear to climb it, seven gear to go down it. So, it's you know, it's that's what they're talking about on here. Before entering a curve, so now. I could give you a uh, piece of advice right here. Whenever curve, whenever you come to a curve, it's either gonna be a hill after that curve, uh, a downgrade after that curve. So pay attention when you're going around curves. Slow down to a safe speed and downshift to the right gear before entering the curve. This lets you use a proper. This this lets you use same power through the curve to help the vehicle to be more stable while turning. It's also allow you to speed up as soon as you are out of the curve. So be mindful of that. Multi-speed rear axles and auxiliary transmission. Multi-speed rear axle and auxiliary, auxiliary transmissions are used on many vehicles to provide extra gears. You usually control them by a selector knob or switch on the gear shift level of the main transmission. There are many different shift patterns. Learn the right way to shift gears in the vehicle you are driving. So some trucks have a like a little red knob on a, a well, a switch, a red switch that once you get to the high gear, you raise your RPMs up some more and then you flick that that um that rig switch that's right on side of your your ship your ship handle so um i know that's dealing more like with the 13 speeds and but that's what they're talking about on here automatic transmissions i know a lot of experienced truck drivers we don't we don't like automatic transmission because it limits us to what we could actually do in a truck. As far as like, you know, trying to get out of, uh, out of being, you know, stuck in the snow or something. We can't rock the truck like that. But, you know, with experience, you learn how to do it even with an automatic. So, but it's much easier with a manual. Some vehicles have automatic transmissions. You can select a low range to get greater engine braking when going down grades. The lower range prevents the transmission from shifting up beyond the select gear unless the governing RPMs ex exceed it. It is important to use a bra this braking effect when going down grades. All right, so now we're dealing with retarders. Some vehicles have retarders. Um, for you new drivers, that's what we consider um, engine brakes, which helps slow a vehicle and reduce the need for using a brake. They reduce brake wear and give you another way to slow down. There are four basic types of retarders, exhaust, engine, um, hydraulic, and electrical. All retarders can be turned on and off by the driver. So we can switch this switch on and off. Uh, most drivers, we just leave it on. We may leave it on low. Just so when, when we come into a light, we can take our feet off the gas pedal and it'll start slowing down. So, you know, that's the reason why we leave it on. On some vehicles, the retarder power can be adjusted. Like I said, we could switch it to a high, low, high, medium, low. You know, it just depends on how much braking power we, we're trying to provide without having to put our feet on a brake pedal. 
when turned on, retard applied a, their braking power to the driver's wheel only. Whenever, whenever you let up the accelerator pedal all the way, because these devices can be noisy, be sure to know where their use is permitted. So these are some of the um the drivers that take the muffler off the um the retarder, the exhaust, and then you hear it coming down the road. Uh, caution. When your drive wheel have poor traction, the retarder may cause them to skid. Therefore, you should turn the retarder off whenever the road is wet, icy, or snow covered. You know, it's, um, I would say, you know, um, you want to be careful with using it. You know, experienced drivers, we have a tendency to still ride with it on. Um, it's just because we know, you know, when we see ice, uh, you know, we know when it's extremely dangerous to use. So now here comes the test your knowledge part. So why should you back towards the driver's side? You want to make sure you're able to see everything. You don't want to. You don't want to, you know, be caught uh, blindsided by something behind you that you didn't know what was behind you. Um, if stopped on a hill, how can you start moving without rolling back using the clutch? You know, use the uh, the the, uh, the handbrake. You know, uh, see when backing. Why is it important to use a helper? to keep from hitting anything. What's the most important hand signal that you and the helper should agree on? Stop. <laughs> That's the most important one. What are the two special conditions where you should downshift? Going around the curve, going down, down the hill. When should you downshift automatic transmission? That's a trick question. <laughs> when should you downshift automatic transmission? Retarders keep you from skidding when the road is slippery, true or false? False. What are two ways to know when to shift? Give me some time to think to yourself and answer. All right. So it's listen to the engine and watch your tech meter. So you watch it. You do your own. Um, you could do it by the engine sp speed or you could watch your tech meter, your RPM. So now remember to slow down. Always try to back from driver's side. Both hands on steering wheel. Be aware of noise ordinance when you're using retarders. Control your speed. Start in proper position. Look at your pad. Use mirrors on both sides. Know when to shift and use a helper i put that last so you so you'll remember to use a helper so like i said i want to thank everybody for attending this video for this training session and if you need to go back through the video go ahead and go back through it we ask that you subscribe to the channel because it's going to be a, more vid, videos being uploaded. And we just trying to make sure everybody understand the material of the CDL training book. And hopefully we'll see y'all down the road.